Are saline implants less harmful than cohesive gel implants? And if so, why? They are both problematic for different reasons. Saline implant and breath and silicone gel implants in general cause certain local problems in the chest. If you have a, an implant that's placed under the muscle, the muscle, such as the pectoralis major, has to be cut. When you cut the pectoralis major muscle, you do make that muscle weaker. So other muscles have to compensate. So that could lead to potential pain in the chest wall, in the shoulder, and also in the back. And look at how where the implant sits. The implant sits on the intercostal muscle, ribs, pectoralis minor muscle, and serratus anterior muscle. Now that muscle goes all the way around your back to insert onto your scapula. That puts a lot of stress on the scapula because with the weight of the implant, the scapula is perhaps drawn more laterally. That puts stress on the trapezius, on the rhomboids, on the levator scapulae. These are all reasons why many patients who had implants under the muscle have neck pain and back pain, and it all puts it under stress. So these are, these are common problems that uh, both, in, both types of implants share. Now, the saline implant uh, can be a problem because the shell over time deteriorates and actually the shell can shed, whether it's texture surface, which will shed sooner or smooth shell uh, saline implants they will shed at a later time. And when it sheds, it'll invite more immune inflammatory cells such as the giant cells to come and react to it. Silico implants can bleed. The oil particles in the silicone can come through the shell. Now, even though they have cohesive gel, the cohesive gel still break down in our body over time. And certainly if you have a rupture from a silicone gel, it's more problematic because it's usually silent. So you don't know when it will rupture or when it does rupture. Certainly if you had trauma, you would know that it could rupture at the time of the trauma. But trauma uh, is, is becomes much more of a causative factor for rupture as the implant ages. Because as the implant ages, the shell becomes weaker and more vulnerable to rupture. And certainly both of them physiologically or pathophysiologically create a problem in the body because they create inflammation. And when you have inflammation, many inflammatory mediators are released and they could create symptoms in every organ system. So there are problems that both share and problems that are different depending upon the implants, uh, depending upon the type of implant.